Uh, I told all my uh, Instagram live followers to come here. So are any of you guys, um, are you any of you guys, did you migrate over from Instagram live to YouTube live? Uh, Lithuania, sorry you're, you're still dropping out. Uh, I'm gonna just wait for a few more. So I have 40 viewers, that's pretty good. Thank you so much for coming on to this live uh, broadcast, my first live broadcast. And I'm looking, I can see up here, but then my, I don't know what I should do. Should I just look on my screen to see as comments come in? Um, I'm gonna do a Q&A. And I did bring my lap, uh, my iPad here, and I have a little section of Q and A's that I had written down over the past month because I've been wanting to do Q and A for a long time, but I thought maybe other than me just you know there's no interaction with regular Q and A working perfectly here in Mexico. Hello Mexico, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I have like just a whole bunch of questions here that people ask. Uh, one of them. Here we go. So 39 people. Should I do? Uh, see, I wish I had someone. Uh, Paulo Furtado, you're a regular, aren't you? You're a regular on my Instagram and YouTube and other platforms. Welcome. Everything looks good in Portugal. Hello, Portugal. I grew up in East Van. Tons of Portuguese in East Vancouver. Um, there are questions flying in. So I'm going to, you know what? It's easier for me to see on my laptop. So let me just kind of go back to the beginning. Um, Yes, Rico. So this is my Rico GRD4. I love this camera. It's very pocketable. Um, I have a, uh, I have a little project on Twitter called "Small Sensor Point and Shoots Are Dead." That's the hashtag. And I actually love forcing myself to use cameras that are underdog cameras. I even brought. Uh, did I bring it? No, I didn't. I also like shooting with the Fujifilm. Uh, the X30, I think that's still a great little uh, two-thirds inch censored camera. With the zoom, when you zoom out all the way, uh, there's things you can do with that that you can't do with the X70 or the X, uh, the new X100F. And so, uh, yeah, so I do love this little camera. Uh, let me just go through here. Are you ready for iPhone 8? Yeah, you know what, I'm using my iPhone uh, 6S. I decided to skip the 7. I don't, um, there was no real motivation for me to upgrade other than the image stabilization. So I'm sticking, I don't upgrade for no reason. Uh, I had the 5S before I upgraded to the 6S. I skipped the 6. So this time I'm skipping the 7 and probably getting the either the 7S or the 8, whatever it's called. Um, would you buy the X100T now? When is the F out? F should be the X1. Okay, so here, here's the X100F and this is the x 100T. T is still a great camera. Uh, just because this came out doesn't make this not good anymore. Um, if you're fine with 16 megapixel and the X-Trans sensor on APS-C uh, format still does a really good job because of that randomized uh, color filter array, you get uh, higher resolution and sharpness than you would with an equivalent uh, full frame camera at the same megapixel but using a standard Bayer filter and a standard AA filter. So you're still getting really good quality images out of this. There are a few upgrades on this. Look at my YouTube video that I talk about these two, but uh, I wouldn't hesitate to buy the X100T. Uh, the F is great, but it's an incremental upgrade other than the sensor and the processor. Those, that's a big upgrade, but everything else, they're very subtle upgrades. If you shoot with this, you will easily go and shoot with this. The biggest difference for me ergonomically is, you see these buttons on the side here? I've never, I've always told Fuji, move them over, and now with the F, you can see all the buttons have moved over, and so, um, great camera. I'm still reviewing and testing the F, and I'm testing it mostly against the X-T20, and before anybody asks me what strap is on here, because I had that many questions about this strap, it's made by a young fellow by the name of Juan. He's from New York and it's called Child of Labor here. I'm gonna just, that's the beauty of this iPhone camera. It focuses well, here you go, Child of Labor. So he's an amazing, he does stuff, he's made stuff for even Juan, another Juan of uh, Beers and Cameras. So go check out uh, Beers and Cameras and uh, Juan has a cool green strap, which I think is something I really want. I think maybe it might be on its way. So uh, anyway, so look for my full review. I'm still reviewing it, so that's why there hasn't been anything conclusive yet. All right, more questions. Stream is perfectly smooth, thank you. From Ireland. Hello, Ireland. 
Um, Germany, very stable. Hello, Germany. I have a cousin and uncle and aunt that lives in Germany in Lüdenscheid. So, hello, Germany. East Van represent. East Van. Hey, guys, that's home to me. Um, let me just see here. GR is nicer than X70. Tilty screen. Yeah, I have an X70 here somewhere. I brought all the cameras with me in case people started asking me questions. And so this is the X70. I have the half case on it. I think it's a really great camera. And if you're starting from scratch and you don't know if you want to go between the GR or the X70, uh, I think for the average consumer, the X70 is probably the better camera. This is very, it's very niche. Think of, in terms of like bicycles, think of a fixie versus a geared bike. The average person's like, why would I ride a bike that has no gears and has no free wheel? And it's like, exactly. So don't get a fixie, get a regular geared bike. And the GR is the same. People are like, why would I buy a camera that has no EVF, that has no image stabilization, that has uh, mediocre JPEGs, that has no articulating screen, it makes no sense, right? But this lens on this is super sharp. It will equal or better even interchangeable lens cameras lenses. This is a super sharp lens. But everything else about this camera, there's no Wi-Fi on the GR, there's no Wi-Fi. It just seems like a backwards camera. And if you are a backwards kind of guy like myself, like I, I seem to like odd things like fixie bikes. Uh, if you're a skateboarder, I mean, I don't know. If you're kind of like off, the mainstream, if you're that, uh, what is that, diffusion of innovation, that little graph, if you're a innovator or an early adopter, I think the GR is kind of quirky enough for you to like, even though this is not a new camera, where if you're kind of in the, the, um, the majority, which is that big major, the main hump of where most people are, most people will like the X70, all right? So I think that's where uh, the big comparison between these two cameras, I gotta find a place to put all this down. So let's go through here. Um, let me see here. I wish I, I wish I had a producer. I wish Camera Girl was here. Uh, any thoughts on buying like an M9 in 20? Yeah, you know what? M9 is still a good camera. There's guys that swear by the M9 is a CCD sensor, right? So even the original M monochrome. Some guys in Hong Kong. If you look at my video with Jeff O Wong, he prefers. He has the M9 titanium and he has the M9 monochrome. He does not like the CMOS. Uh, sensor, the 240 and the new uh, 246 monochrome. A lot of guys love the 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 uh, CCD sensor. So uh, I say go for it. Just make sure there was a recall on that sensor. There was corrosion on the edge of the M9. Make sure that that has been done by whoever bought it. And if not, I think it's still open. Leica is. Uh, uh, doing a free repair on all M9s with that corrosion issue. And it doesn't matter if you're the original owner or anything like that, because Leica warranty is really good. Like, first of all, Leica, it doesn't matter what country you buy in, there is no um, sort of a, a, a term of like gray market Leica. It doesn't matter where in the world you buy a Leica. If you walk into any Leica store with a Leica, you will be serviced because, you know, that's just the way Leica works. So make sure that sensor is fixed. And if not, then factor in the price because now you will probably be without a camera for three, four months as you send it to, I think it's either, it might be done in New Jersey. I'm not sure because that's where their North American Repair Center is or they send it back to Germany. So make sure that sensor thing has been uh, taken care of. So here we go. Let's keep on going here. Uh, camera Girl now is sitting across me. So she is my producer. Uh, the camera girl, if there's anything you see that um, I'm just catching up here. Um, what is what did you feel the 50 f2? I actually like it. I forced myself to shoot with it, Paul. Um, Paulo, sorry, Paulo. I have it here. Look how compact that lens is. Uh, this is um, let me see here. Where is this is the so this is the 23. This is a 23 f2. Okay, the 23 f2. And this is the fifth. This is the fifty. It's basically the same size. I mean, this is the mounting plate here. So, like this, it's it's basically the same size. So it's an odd focal length if you're always converting from thirty-five mil equivalent. So this is like uh, this ends up being a seventy-five mil. If you shoot rangefinder, uh, the seventy-five mil would be like if you're like a guy, maybe you're used to. But even amongst those of all my Leica friends, I don't know any of them that have a seventy-five. So even in the in the rangefinder world, it's an odd focal length. But it's it's hard to explain. It's kind of um, I couldn't use a fifty-six on the street. 
it just seemed too telephoto. Even though it's only a six mil difference, um, if you, in terms of APS-C, it is a uh, six three. It's a nine mil difference in terms of the field of view, right? But um, uh, I found it a little bit handier, and the AF is super fast and accurate on this compared to the fifty six one two. So uh, I I think it's good, but probably best to if you have a zoom lens. So for instance, if you have uh, the eighteen to fifty five shoot at uh, you know what you can't it doesn't show you a 50 mark but it's showing you how awkward that focal length is so even on this lens it doesn't show the 50 or even the standard kit lens i don't like this lens that much but the xc lens it goes to 50. um shoot at 50 and just sort of see what you think about it but uh, i i have pictures posted here and there on Fuji Love as well as in my video, so just sort of check it out and see. But I think it's, it's I think it's great. It's a great addition to the uh, Fuji Cron lineup. I even made Billy say Fuji Cron. So, um, bring about Fuji Make a View Mode where EVF access in the menu. Go to the news here. Fuji Make a View. You know, what, I'm gonna have I'm gonna try to get Billy on again. Maybe even. Maybe is there a way to do this like a conference call? Maybe I'll do a Q&A with Billy live. How about that? If I, I'm getting a lot of Fuji questions here. I can't answer all of them, but here, what watch knife do you have and like the most? Okay, you know what? I don't have my favorite knife on me. Uh, I like Spyderco's. This is kind of off subject for all you camera nerds. So I like Spyderco knives. Uh, they're my favorite brand. It's American made, but they use steel from Seki City, Japan. Can you see that? Maybe it doesn't focus on there. I have to kind of hide behind here. Um, anyways, so Spyderco is my favorite brand. And in terms of watches, I have lots of watches. I like this one here. It's a Tissot uh, PR50. It's a very elegant, thin watch. There's nothing special about it except it's just it's just very simple. So uh, my favorite watch that I have is probably a vintage. Um, what is it now? Omega, Omega Seamaster that my wife's uncle in Hong Kong gave me. That's my favorite watch. Okay, um, I have too much money. No, I don't have too much money because I drive a Nissan Sentra. I find people blow so much money on cars, it depreciates. I love cars. It was probably one of my first loves in my life. But when you think about it, I knew someone that would buy a new car every two, three, or four years, and they would lose Thirty, forty thousand dollars in depreciation. I mean, you know how many how many cameras you can buy with a twenty, thirty thousand dollar depreciation every three, four years? That's like, that's like eight to twelve grand a year you lose in depreciation depreciation on something. Where you know, I buy a camera or a watch or a knife, it doesn't depreciate like that. And so, anyways, that's here. Do any any real questions? Sorry, all my all your questions are real, but um, camera girl. Uh, so someone's asking me, Taka, do you own the Fuji 16 F1.4? That's actually one of the questions I was going to answer. I do not own any Fuji equipment. Everything that you see me that I have that is Fuji, it's because it's on loan from Fuji. And they extend to me extended loans because as a reviewer, they see how much content I create. And they know I'm constantly comparing cameras. Like for instance, I asked again for the X-T10 because the X-T20 came out. And now that the X100F, came out, you know, I want an X100T to kind of compare. So I don't own any Fuji. It might seem like I do. And another uh, a question that leads from there is, well, does Fuji pay you? Uh, Fuji does not pay me. None of the reviewers, uh, the company, the manufacturers pay me. Um, I am considered media. So you think of brands, large brands like uh, uh, Techno Buffalo, is that one of them? CNET, uh, Engadget, DP Review, they're all, Technology and DP Review is a photo-based media website and they review equipment. A lot of them get pre-production products, but in the end, they have to send it all back. And even Brian Tong is one of my favorite presenters on CNET. He does the Apple Byte and Googleicious and other things like that, one of the senior editors. And he even tells all the time, he's like, he buys his own AirPods, he buys his own iPhone. Apple doesn't give, the, they don't gift them anything and they shouldn't because you want to be an unbiased reviewer. And so it, for myself too, none of the brands, 
reasons uh, that other than things like camera straps because what it costs them to ship it to me would cost the amount of money for me to ship it back so stuff like straps um, they are sent to me to review but if I don't like them which I have had straps sent to me that I didn't think they were that great or I would immediately give feedback and say I think you need to fix this but other than stuff like that or camera bags all my cameras they're all on loan and I ship them all back my only camera that I use regularly that I personally own is is this my Ricoh GR and my GRD4 and my iPhone and then all my film cameras those are the only ones that I personally own everything else they're all review cameras okay camera girl am I did I miss anything big I'm gonna look through okay I'm look through. Um, yeah wing you're, you're right uh, Billy mentioned the 50 millimeter focal length uh, of this lens which works out to be a 75 mil in APS-C should be familiar to all of those that were the early adopters of the digital uh, the DSLRs and most of us had 50 mil lenses most of us did and when we went to APS-C the 50 mil lens on a full frame worked out to be a 75 so there should be a whole mess of us uh, early adopters of DSLRs that would be used to the 50 mil on an APS-C as well as someone had mentioned before, a lot of the zooms were like 28 to 70, 35 to 70, uh, 28 to 75. And that 70 limit was sort of the tail end of the zooms. And it's not that it was a favorite focal length, but it's just that's as far as the lens went. So I still say it, it's not like a favorite lens. If someone can choose between a 50, 75, 85, 90, you know, 100, 105, 75 would probably be the least popular. And if you look at Leica, they have a 50 mil, it goes to 75, goes to 90, and then 135. I guarantee you that they sell less of the 75 millimeter lens than, than the 90 or the 135. And so I still say it's an unpopular focal length, but you know, there's times where focal lengths become unpopular for a while, and then there's a resurgence. For instance, I remember in the 90s, nobody shot with a 50 mil on a 35 mil. It was just a kit lens, it came with every camera, the uh, the K1000 Pentax, I think in elementary school or high school, they all came with a 50 mil lens. Everyone was used to it, and it was a boring focal length, only because everyone were, they were so used to shooting with it that anything else other than the 50 became exotic. And I find that the newer, like the younger kids that are first getting into photography, now they love the 50 mil. So in uh, the, the APS-C format, it's a 35. And now everyone's gushing, saying, oh, the 50 mil is such a fantastic, it's my favorite focal length, it's the best, it's the best. But I remember in the 80s and 90s, everyone hated the 50. And now there's a resurgence of 50. So I think it's a trend, you know, it's a, a sort of trend thing. And we'll see if Fujifilm can make the 50 mil on the APS-C a new trending focal length. So thank you, Wing, for that statement. It wasn't really a question, was it? Um, Should we go back to older ones? If you want to. From Aldo. Hello, what are your favorite settings on Acros? Did I say it right? Simulation for portraits. Acros. Yeah, for me, <laughs> I no longer... Yes, thank you, Camera Girl. So she's my producer. She's just sitting a couple of feet from me. So I have to be careful what I say. Um, some, someone... What was his name again, uh, Aldo. Camera Girl? Aldo. Aldo. Um, Acros. My workflow with... Um, Fujifilm film profiles now is I shoot in raw and then in post I add uh, the the Acros so I actually like the Acros plus R or the Acros plus uh, Y and for those of you who don't know what that is those are just uh, equivalent color filters so when you shot black and white you can adjust uh, the exposure based on the filters in terms of like for instance if you're wearing a red shirt and you want that red shirt to look white well then you use a let me get this straight here you use a red filter anything with skin tones or reddish tones looks whiter when you shoot in black and white and so when i'm shooting people with acros with portraits the yellow and the red will bring out the exposure make the face look whiter and more glowing uh, so i would typically use that however again i do it in post on my uh, in Lightroom and so not only can I adjust the filter but I can also adjust the uh, the color channels on Lightroom and basically get the same effect anyways and so it really depends on the overall scene I like the fact that you can add the film profiles later because when you do that um, you can, you have more control over the image but if I was like right now because I'm shooting with the X100F and the X-T20 and it's a pre-production camera none of the uh, 
the I can't it, the, none of the raw files can be open in Lightroom, and because of that, I am doing in camera processing. And when I do acros, again, it's the it's the red or the yellow, and then I use the the highlights and shadows to sort of plus minus based on the exposure. So uh, thank you for that question. So we have David asking, do you still contribute to Fuji Love magazine? Uh, David, yes, actually last month. I did three articles. So when the X, uh, X100F, the X-T20, and the XF50 came out, uh, everyone I knew all the the um, I knew all the ex photographers were given the X100F like two months or a month earlier. So I knew there would be a plethora of X100F glorious uh, reviews gushing how awesome it is, and it is it is good, but. Uh, I knew that very few of them had access or even wanted to try the X-T20 because to me I call it the, the working man's or the workhorse, uh, the workhorse camera. Um, this X, oh this is X-T2, the X-T20 in my estimation will probably outsell the X-100F and that might sound crazy but the X-T10 outsold the X-T1. So this, although it's not a glamorous camera, um, it has tons of features for the price that you pay for it. However, um, one of the things that it might bother some people, it doesn't bother me, but because this is not considered one of the premium cameras, it is made, my pre-production copy is made in China. The final production will either be made in Thailand or China, because the X-T10 was, if I, if I remember correctly, was made in Thailand. So if that makes a deal to you, like I only buy stuff that's made in Japan, I only buy stuff made in USA, made in Germany for Leica stuff, then the X-T20 will not be made in Japan because it's just, it's a high volume camera. The Japanese factory won't be able to produce enough of these. It has to be built in their Thailand or their Chinese factories. And so because of that, that might stop some people from buying it. But I think it's a great camera. So anyways, uh, I digress quite a bit, don't I? The Fuji Love, yes, I, I'm the first writer for the first of every month. So the first article for uh, February was me, and the first article for coming up March will be me. And I also contribute to their Fuji Love, the magazine, the paid subscription thing. I, I contribute to that every once in a while. All right. Um. Thank you for all your questions and thank you for everyone joining me from all over the world. I don't know what time it is where you're at. It is 10.30 here in on the West Coast in Vancouver. And if you don't know where Vancouver is, we're in the same timeline as Seattle, Portland, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, like, you know, the whole West Coast of North America. We're in the same time zone as them. And so that's where I am here. Hello from LA. I really want to visit LA. I want to meet John Free. And there's quite a few other really great street photographers and photographers in LA. So I would love to visit you guys down there. Oh, here's a question for me. Okay. Polly's asking, does Camera Girl have a camera? Can you, sorry, can you hear, can you guys hear Camera Girl? I hope you can. So camera girl, you can answer. She's off camera, but um, I right now I'm using my iPhone, but I would love to have a camera. Just don't know which one yet. I think she needs a film camera. What do you guys think? A film camera, or maybe I'll give her my. Hi, Gina. Hello, Gina. Okay. Tons of questions coming in. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, I can't believe it's already been 26 minutes. Um, you know, oh, I do want a Leica, do I? Yeah, I don't think Camera Girl <laughs> wants a Leica. Even I don't have a Leica. So no Leica for Camera Girl until I get a Leica. And the Leica that I want right now more than any other Leica is actually the Leica MA that I used in Hong Kong. I actually want to film Leica because I don't, let's just say I'm paying for it. I don't want to spend eight grand, 10 grand Canadian for a camera that in four or five years I want to replace. I do believe in the philosophy of a lot of the guys in Hong Kong which say, a lot of them buy the MP and they say it's a camera for life. Film is not going anywhere. Um, over a hundred years of film cameras, there are just, tens of millions of film cameras out there. Any, anytime any medium, any format becomes obsolete, uh, I've read this article somewhere, they say that it is the the players, for instance, uh, there might be tons of Betamax movies and VHS movies. People are struggling right now to buy 
not the media, but they're struggling to buy the player. They're, you know, try to find a Betamax player, try to find a VHS player. It's not that easy, or even a track. You got tons of a tracks. You go to uh, some uh, secondhand store and you got tons of a tracks. And you're like, well, where do I find an a track player? That's the problem, right? Well, with photography, with cameras, there's no problem. There are so many film cameras out there. Film will eventually become a niche product, of course, but there will always be film. Uh, I, I predict even going 20, 30, 40, 50 years, film will always be produced just because of the amount of film cameras that were made. And so <laughs> if I was gonna buy Leica, I would buy a film Leica. So I just wanna say thank you for all your comments and questions. I'm gonna try to get through all of them. If we've missed, missed your questions, uh, we apologize. Uh, don't be frustrated, keep asking. Um, or once this video is over, uh, BHT will go through all the questions and answer, answer them all, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know if these, I think these live questions disappear, maybe or not. They might disappear, so I don't know if I have time to get to all of these here. So XT20, you know what, I don't see, I don't see camera girl caring. I think maybe something like this. The Canon G7X is probably a good camera for her, as well as the Sony RX series, something that's very connected. She loves um, lining, which is, people don't know what line is, it's like the Asian equivalent of WhatsApp, but it's way better, like way, way better than WhatsApp. Uh, many people that I show them line, they never go back to WhatsApp. Uh, a lot of people in China don't, like, like Line doesn't work in China, but WhatsApp does. So a lot of people that are from Hong Kong or China, they still use WhatsApp. But in Korea, in Japan, a lot of places like that, Line is huge. And so uh, because she wants to be connected, that's why I think the iPhone makes sense. And in terms of pure volume, I probably shoot more iPhone pictures than any other type of picture because the camera, I mean, I'm shooting this video right now with my iPhone. And so uh, I think iPhone photography, you know, I'm going to just change the exposure here a little bit. There you go. Uh, I think uh, mobile photography is uh, is still huge, and the reason why everyone uses it. All right. It seems like everyone wants to talk to Camera Girl. Um, no, not right now. Not right, no, not right now. <laughs> I'm in my PJs. <laughs> Camera Girl's in her PJs. Very cute PJs too. It's like a onesie. Um, Here, do you guys I'm gonna know pick your brain. <clears throat> Gus is asking, what do you think will be the next real step in photography? Oh, good question. So who is that, Gus? Gus. Gus. I hope you guys can hear Camera Girl's voice. The iPhone microphone's here, like right to the edge here, and then Camera Girl's just in behind. So anyways, the next big innovation of photography, you should look this up. Panasonic and Fujifilm have been working on a organic sense for the past few years. Fujifilm put so much not faith, but they converted one of their factories. It was misreported. I was talking to Billy. It was mis reported that Fujifilm sold their their own sensor factory and they didn't sell it, they just reappropriated it. They removed the sensor part of that factory and they put an assembly in that part of that factory. So Fujifilm right now, currently, they have to depend on Sony and other brands to build their sensors for them, but it is to Fuji spec. So the X-Trans is their proprietary technology. They have to give the blueprints to that to Sony and they tell Sony, Sony, please make these sensors for us. But uh, Panasonic and Fujifilm have been working on a organic sensor for the past few years and I think the, one of the delays of the X-Pro2 in my estimation was they were hoping that that organic sensor would be ready for the X-Pro2 when once they realized they couldn't wait anymore they had to use a, a third party which is Sony to create the, the new third generation X-Trans sensor but once the organic sensor comes out so look it up I think even DP Review wrote a, quite an extensive article on it but they're attributing it mostly to Panasonic but it is a co- um, technology development with Fujifilm, but it's gonna have like, I think from what I remember, 14 stops of, it's really bright here, isn't it? 14 stops of uh, exposure uh, latitude. So, and also even the way that the lines are read, you know why there is rolling shutter is the way each line of each sensor is read, it's, it's read line by line. So when you move around too fast, there is that kind of that weird jello effect. When you use, especially when you use the um, electronic shutter, well, the way it's wired, this new sensor, it will actually uh, either, instead of reading it line by line, I think it reads it all at once, or it's done so quickly that it seems like it's 
done all at once, it's gonna change the way sh electronic shutters work. If all the uh, the sensors will read and then you know not read at the same time, you're gonna get rid of rolling shutters. So it's gonna improve video quality. It's gonna improve your electronic shutter. It may even allow you to use uh, a flash. And that's the reason why you can't use flash with an electronic shutter because as each line is being read and the flash goes, well, only part of the image will have flash on it, right? So uh, it'll change the way flash works. It'll change the way uh, we see the, AP and, and this technology is not APS-C. This organic sensor could be applied to smartphone sensors, uh, APS-C sensor, which Fujifilm will probably apply to their current uh, camera system, as well as full frame companies. So imagine Sony buying this organic sensor from Fujifilm and Panasonic, and it could find its way even into medium format. So to me, uh, sensor technology is probably the next biggest leap in digital photography in terms of technology. And on top of that, um, it will be, I, I hope it is, it will be a move away from uh, the cropped medium format. I really want medium format to not be cropped as well. If someone can make a square sensor, even if it's a 35 mil equivalent in terms of size, square or more panoramic, so 21 by nine, like an anamorphic, kind of a wide angle movie cinematic. So when you use a GH5, any camera that shoots video, it always crops the top and bottom. And it, to me, it's a waste of sensor. So if you can have a sensor that's wider. So that's my own wish list. But for technology, look up organic sensor made by Panasonic and Fujifilm. So thank you for that question. It's a good question. And I just want to say thank you all for tuning in um, during your schedule. I'm, I'm not sure where you guys, well, um, probably working or, or maybe something else uh, you might be up to, but you're taking the time to, to watch this live. So we really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, GFX50, I shot a video with Billy and it's kind of funny. Maybe Billy won't be pleased that I'm mentioning this, but um, I was complaining about the video feature. So I was using the X-T2 and I told Billy, Billy, we need a blinking light in the front so that we know when the video stops. We talked about the X GFX 50 and he actually gave me some pretty cool insights, including um, one of the designers of the GFX used to work at Minolta and he was one of the key figures in helping to design the X-T2, X-100. Anyways, he was an ex-Minolta guy and um, we lost like 38 minutes of video and then by that time, we had already shot like 40 minutes of video of you know going over the X1F, the, the the all the other newer cameras that we were too tired to repeat everything we talked about. So I said, Billy, you see what I mean? You need a flashing light. So Billy is going to talk to the big shots at Fujifilm and try to encourage them to not only focus on the technology of video, so you know 4K, blah blah blah, but even small things like the 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 uh, iPhone smartphone app app that they have, the remote control. When you shoot with that with that remote control, it tops out at 720p. You can't shoot 4K or 1080p and it drops down to 30 frames per second when you use a remote control app. And to me that made no sense. And I said I asked Fuji, I said, well why does it drop? They said, oh because that's the highest uh, bit rate and the highest resolution that you can shoot with the app that you can transfer to your smartphone and then send it off to social media. And I said, well, I don't think anyone is using the remote app to send videos via social media. A lot of people want to use it as a remote, right? Like as a monitor, you can monitor your video, you can start, you can stop, you can pull focus, you can see your audio monitoring, all that stuff. So I said, even if there's a paid app for the X-T2, I said, I can see guys like me and other uh, pro users to use the uh, to pay for an app for the X-T2. So uh, the GFX is better than I thought. I had hoped that it would be more like the Haspel X1D. It is not, but I understand why they went focal plane shutter so they can use adaptive lenses. You can use the Hasselblad uh, lenses that Fujifilm makes for them with the built-in leaf shutter. You can put that onto the GFX and you could uh, disengage the built-in focal plane shutter on the GFX and use the built-in leaf shutter on those, I think they're called HC lenses, the Hasselblad HC lenses, those will work as leaf shutter. So if you want leaf shutter lenses currently, put the Hasselblad with the adapter, uh, put the Hasselblad onto the Fujifilm and you can shoot leaf shutter. So uh, I, like I said, I was actually pretty impressed with it. Ergonomically, it feels a lot 
like the X-T2. If you know how to, if you can navigate your way through the X-T2, you'll navigate your way through the GFX quite well. Uh, even the vertical control grip is actually better than the X-T2 because the X-T2, the button's up here, but the GFX, it's down here, the shutter button. It's more ergonomic. Where your hand and your eye lands is, is, is equivalent to where it is when you shoot like this. Right, see where your hand is like this? The, uh, the X-T2 is a bit higher, so it feels a little bit odd when you're shooting uh, vertically. So uh, GFX, great. I'm gonna get my copy, I think, in about a week. And then I have a really cool project with a portrait photographer that loves shooting um, medium format film. And we're probably gonna do a, a GFX digital medium format versus film. We're gonna scan at the same resolution and we're gonna take a look and see. So look forward to that upcoming video. Uh, 4K video on the X-T20 equal to the X-T2. I've answered this on quite a few different comments, and so maybe I'll just mention it here. Uh, the X-T2 actually shoots in 6K, and then it down converts, down renders, whatever it's called, to 4K. So you're actually, you know when people shoot 4K and then they down render it to like 1080? You actually do get an increase in, in resolution, sharp, you know, it just, it looks better when you do that. Well, same with this. This down converts from 6K to 4K, and it takes a lot of horsepower to do that. Um, the but because of it, there is a 1.17 times crop on the X-T2 when you shoot 4K. The X-T20, uh, there is no crop when you shoot 4K, but it achieves that by line skipping. Now, according to Billy, he says he couldn't see a difference, but he admitted that it was not, he wasn't looking at it through a 4K monitor. So uh, I, ha I don't even have a 4K monitor or 4K TV, so I couldn't even tell you. But um, there is line skipping. In terms of bit rate, it's the same bit rate, but bit rate, as you can see now, isn't everything. Okay, so same bit rate in 4K between these two, but this does line skipping, this does down convert from 6K. So in terms of quality, you're gonna get better 4K. I mean, if you have an X-T2 and you want a B-cam, I recommend in general, especially if you're a pro, buy two of the same body. And that's for any camera. If you have something as a B-cam, if you can afford it and you're a pro, all your cameras should have the same settings, set to the same. You shouldn't have to fumble looking for uh, looking for certain features, have two of the same bodies, but if you need to have it as a B cam, this is a great B cam. Um, if you're using it as a B roll camera, if you're skipping around and you're shooting 4K, I don't think, it's nice to have a B cam match exactly to your A cam, but for most of us, we're not cinematographers making Hollywood movies or high-end movies. I don't think it matters that much that you're switching, because a lot of guys with Sony's who shoot with an A7 series as an A cam, and then you use like the, the 6000 series, right? The, the 6000, 6300, 6500, or even the RX100 as a B cam, and that works out fine. So anyways, thank you for that question. Yeah, snow is horrible here. Snow, uh, I want to move my camera over, but uh, yeah, it's not fun. I've been stuck at home for the past four or five days. I've been just walking around the neighborhood and walking to get food and groceries. Um, I don't know much, best still video camera for three or four thousand dollars. You know, if anyone had everything in one, like this will trump every other camera, then there would be no competition. So every camera I find, like one will do one better than the other. I think if you want a camera that's very strong in video, but also does stills well, uh, you can't beat, I think, the Sony A7 or A6500, 6300 series, or the Panasonic GH5, GH4 series. Those series, those two, which seems odd because Panasonic is micro four thirds, the Sony is either full form or APS-C, but the GH5, the new one that's just been announced, I looked at the specs, and I know a lot of my videographer friends like uh, Ryan from Arcade Original, they're blown away at what it can do. The biggest weakness with the Micro Four Third system is low light. It cannot do low light like you can with APS-C or full frame, but the new GH5 is supposed to do low light really, really well, and so I think even that is now gone. And the new, uh, sort of like the poor man's, uh, GH5, GH4 is the new G, G85, I think, or GX85, or the 80 in Europe. That is pretty darn good too. And I'm actually looking at using one of those cameras as my A cam. So uh, for video, you know, Fuji is catching up, but it's still not there. If you want a good video camera, uh, I'd say Panasonic or Sony. 
All right, so I'm just going through here. I lost my producer temporarily, so I'm gonna have to, There's lots of questions here. Thank you so much. Uh, X-T2 or Sony A7R2 full frame for street photography. Um, for street photography, to me, people really focus a lot on the technical aspect of street photography. And I, I could tell you that most, like a lot of those Fujifilm X photographers prefer the X100F and technically the X-T2 with the 23 mil will outperform the X100F in almost every possible uh, test you can do other than flash syncing because if you're a street photographer that likes to shoot with flash, the, the um, leaf shutter and the Fujifilm will, will outshoot the focal plane shutter and the X uh, T2, but you think, well, why does anyone choose a camera that's lower spec than uh, a camera that's higher spec? Because the ergonomics, the feel, the size, all those other things come into play. So for me, Sony is a menu driven camera. And because it's menu driven, like the X-T2, you have your ISO dial right here. You have your shutter speed, exposure compensation. You have everything you need that's just like just right there for you. The fact that it's full frame to me makes no difference. And for most street photographers, you want depth of field because you're shooting on an instant. Um, shallow depth of field bokeh is not what most people look for in street photography, other than if you're doing street portraits. And so really, in a way, it works against you. That's why I actually like my iPhone or using my Ricoh uh, GRD4. It's a one over 1.7 inch sensor. When I shoot at f1.9 on a full frame camera, this f1.9 is equivalent to f9 on a full frame. And so I'm shooting at ISO 160 at one, at one you know wide open at f1.9, and I'm getting f9 worthy of depth of field on the street. And so if you're shooting with a, even with the A7 series full frame, you stopped on F9, you might be have to be up at ISO 3200, ISO 1600. I'm shooting at ISO 160 because of that, because I get great depth of field. And that's one of the reasons why I love shooting with this uh, um, Ricoh GRD4 for the street, just because of the compact size. I mean, I even shoot, a lot of GR guys shoot like this, and you actually use your thumb to shoot. So vertically, you can walk like this, you can walk like this and shoot, or even up against your chest like this, and you can trigger it like this. And if you're really good at uh, snap focus, meaning you preset the distance, you can be talking to someone and just, you know, you could you could tell them, hey, I'm gonna take a few pictures of you. I'm gonna just kind of shoot blind like this. And you can be taking pictures of them like this, and they don't even realize you're taking pictures of them. So for me, if you said A7, is X-T2, or this, I'd actually still pick this or my iPhone over those two cameras for street photography, just because of, not the technology, because the, you know, this is a horribly noisy CCD sensor. So I have to shoot at ISO 160 and RAW, and it doesn't handle dynamic range very well, but in terms of being able to get the shot, I can get the shot more likely with this camera than those other two cameras that you mentioned. Um, here we go. Yes, the X-T2, the 1080p, there was a, a video, I forgot who wrote it, uh, talked about it, but you know, it was saying 4K, 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 you know, if you can compare some cameras like the X-T2 that oversamples and then down converts to 1080p versus like my iPhone that can shoot 4K, you know what, the X-T2 at 1080 will, will out-resolve the 4K, uh, or like in terms of the micro contrast and sharpness than a camera that has a cheap plastic lens. I'm not sure if the iPhone has a cheap plastic lens, but I've, I've seen the 4K footage on my iPhone and then the 1080 on the X-T2. The X-T2 looks better than the iPhone 4K. And so, you know, 4K isn't the be all end all of, of a high resolution video. You, there is a, a varying, it's like saying uh, 24 megapixel sensor and you think that every camera that shoots 24 megapixels is all gonna look the same. No, it's not. The, that's just the pixel count. And same with 4K. 4K is just 2160 vertical resolution on a video. That's all it means. And so uh, there's varying degrees of quality of 4K. Even like if you're shooting in, uh, in log format, right? There's 422, 420, there's different bit rates. All those things come into play so uh, the XC2 is a really good video camera it's just it needs all those other things that I mentioned about the GH5 GH4 and the Sony a7 6300 the coding and stuff like that the Fujifilm needs to do a little bit of a better job with that all right um, let's see here I, I wish I wish camera girl was back 
uh, in Capture One, better processor. You know, I have not tried Capture One. I am going to try it. Um, that's one of the reasons why Billy had mentioned, we kind of go into, you know what, it may even been cut off, but Billy and I talk a lot about, in the video, about why Fujifilm decided to go uh, Bayer uh, sensor on the GFX versus using the X-Trans technology. So uh, wait for that video. Uh, one of the reasons is because of third-party uh, converter apps like Capture One. Uh, if you're using that, the X-Trans algorithm, the demosaicing algorithm on the X-Trans is a lot more complicated than the Bayer. The Bayer has been around since like the late 70s, right? The, the, what, whatever his name was, John Bayer, whatever. He worked for Kodak and they named that, uh, the color filter rate after him. And so that, that, that algorithm has been around for so long that most of these uh, third-party apps that create uh, demosaicing apps to convert RAW to JPEG or or whatever you want to do, um, it's a lot easier for them to work with. So that's one of the reasons why Fujifilm decided to go Bayer, knowing that most of the guys shooting media, digital media format are portrait guys, and a lot of them shoot Capture One. All right. Would you recommend X70? You know what, I should do an X70 and the GR final street shootout. I do have a YouTube video that talks about the two. Um, it really depends on your shooting style. I know guys, you can be proficient at both, okay? You can be proficient using both the X70 or the GR on the street. You can be good at both. But uh, the X70 has the advantage of, of the articulating screen. If that's the style that you like to shoot down low, GR, you just have to eyeball it. And some guys are good. Like if you're really good at the GR, guys, once you know the field of view of your camera, you can shoot blind. You just, as you walk around, you're like, I know this is uh, 28 mil is like, um, what is it now? Is it like 60, 66, 66 degree or 70 degree, uh, the angle of view. But anyways, you just kind of know, like I, I, I think 28 mil, I know this is about what I'm gonna get. I don't have to look and you can sort of shoot blind, but both are good. I know guys that shoot with the X70 and they're great with it. I know guys that shoot with the GR, they're great with it. So uh, it really depends on your style of photography. All right, I have my producer back. Oh, hey, Ibari and X, nice to see you. Um, have you experienced using the cactus triggers with the X-rays? No, no, someone, someone offered to send those to me. I forgot who it was. So whoever it was, can you contact me again? I have not, uh, Ibarin X, and I will uh, try to play with those. I don't get access to a lot of third-party stuff because, um, as you, a lot of you know, um, I review the equipment once I forge a relationship with the manufacturer. So I actually have a contact at Leica. I have a contact at Canon, uh, Fujifilm, Ricoh Imaging. And that's the way I want to work because once I return the camera, I actually do a little write-up and explain to them what I think they can do to help improve it. And often, like Fujifilm, they actually do... Sometimes I'm on a phone conference with, with uh, Fujifilm telling them what I thought about pre-production cameras and I do a little write-up. Uh, with third-party equipment, it's a lot harder for me to have a relationship because they're a lot smaller and a lot of them are like big head who. They don't even know who I am. So I've approached a lot of small brands like um, Moondog Labs with their anamorphic lens for iPhones. Um, I don't want to put any of these brands on the spot. I've approached Moment for their iPhone accessories. I've approached GoPro. I've approached a lot of these smaller brands. Uh, uh, Moment and... Um, Moondog, they've all got you, got back to me. And you know, they were very polite, very nice, got back to me, but, but they don't know who I am. They don't want to send me anything to review. And they've offered me discounts to buy it, but I said, no, I'm a reviewer. I can't buy everything I review. And so because of it, I have a hard time accessing third-party manufacturers that are smaller. Because I understand, they're small. I mean, Casey Neistat got a moment system. Other guys will get sent. Because, you know, they have 200,000, 2 million followers on YouTube or Instagram. And they're like, oh, wow, what a great way of showcasing our products. And even if they're not photographers, they just send them stuff. Um, to me, I think there's a great advantage because I have a lot less followers. But most of the people are more... I have a focused group of followers. And... If I review something and I say it's really great and I can take great pictures and I write an article on Fujilove or on my website, I find there's a high percentage of people that run out and buy these products. But 
uh, some of these smaller brands, they don't want to risk it. They'd rather give uh, someone with 2 million followers on YouTube that know nothing about photography, give them a product than someone with 20,000 followers. And so um, if any one of you are connected to some of the smaller brands, uh, you know, send them to me. I, I use the email address info at bigheadtaco.com and I would love to work with smaller brands to help. And a lot of the small brands, they end up being accessory brands, right? Like. Um, I end up reviewing camera bags, camera straps, and those sort of things, but sort of the mid-tier level stuff like GoPro stuff. I love to review a um, drone. I love to review third-party lenses uh, from different manufacturers. So if anyone has any, can you tell how dark it's gotten? It's, I'm using my little LED light here, so it's gotten kind of dark here. Um, sorry, camera girl's waving me down. So anyways, Ibari next, nice seeing you here, camera girl. Uh... Hi, I'm back. Sorry for my absence. Um, did you answer John's question? What's that? Let's see here. Sorry, I have to scroll. Um, this one here. If not, I'll read it out. What is that? This Who is one that? right here. John here. You get so caught up in the newest model. Uh, 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 sure, go ahead. Okay. A uh, question from John. Hi, Taki. People get so caught up in the newest model and newest technology, having used most Every Fuji model, as well as Leica, is there an older and thus less expensive model you would recommend? Okay, thank you, John. That's a very good question. Um, there are tons, and that's why I started the project on Twitter. To, I know Twitter's dying. I, I love it. I don't understand why anyone likes Facebook, personally, because I don't really care. I, I love my family, but what they inter what interest they have doesn't interest me where twitter i choose who to follow what brands feed me new reviews and new products and so on there i have a project it's a hashtag small sensor point and shoots are dead trying to tell people that these older cameras yes there are issues uh, in terms of image quality that don't compare to the newest cameras. So the newest cameras, you know what? They blow away a lot of the older CCD cameras. Look at something like the M9 versus the new Leica M10. M9, you can't shoot over ISO 1600. I mean, that's pretty much it. And the new M10, you could shoot over, you could shoot up to ISO 12,800 or 12,600 with no problem. And that's like a huge deal, right? That's a two, three, that's like a three stop difference in your exposure. But I actually like the struggle of creating a great image. Some people will say, no, 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 you know, like the easier, the better, you know, shoot auto ISO, shoot everything, make everything easy. And maybe it's a personality thing for me. When someone tells me something's more difficult, I actually want to use it because once I conquer it, I feel that it wasn't the tool, it wasn't the camera that made me a better photographer, it was me. And it confirms that when I use something that doesn't, people typically, like my iPhone project, right? When I use my iPhone mostly on my Instagram, I feel that I've conquered that format because I've used something that everyone's saying, well, you can't take great pictures with it. And so in terms of older cameras, it's like a smartphone. Use a smartphone, I think that's great. Um, the Rico, uh, where is it now here? The Ricoh GRD4 is a cult camera. I think a Bellamy from Japan Camera Hunter, a lot of those guys, they actually have the one version older than this, which is the GRD3. There's not a big difference in the three and the four. This is a cult camera. Actually, if you look for the GRD4, which is a one over 1.7 inch sensor versus the GR, which is an APS-C sensor, you'll find on the used market, they're selling for about the same price. And you're thinking like, why would people spend more or the same money for something with the older, like this is CCD, this is CMOS, right? So horrible video. I think it's like 640 by 480. This is 720p. But uh, people like, you know, it's the ergonomics and the size of these. They look very similar in size, but this GRD4, in terms of an older camera, I love this. Uh, the Canon S120 is probably the best. I think even Casey Neistat bragged about it. It was one of the most like a tank-like built point and shoot you can ever get. My brother has the S120, he loves that thing. He has the A6300, he has all the newer Sony stuff, but he loves the S120. In terms of build quality, it's built better than the uh, the G series. That thing, you could literally, it feels like you can step on that thing. The S95, yes, I've sold more people on the S95 and the S100 than probably like that and the RX100 series. But if I had to choose between the two, and especially if they're kind of new to photography, I say you should buy the S series. And also the, the older 
Panasonic LX series, the LX3. I owned that for a few years. So I actually this before the uh, LX before the GRD4, I had the LX3, um, LX3, LX5, the LX7, which works out in the Leica equivalent as the deluxe, uh, the deluxe cameras, right? The deluxe Type 109. Um, so those are great older point and shoot. In terms of, uh, like for instance, my DSLR that I have, because I shot Minolta film cameras for, you know, over 20 years, 20 plus years. And when I went over to, when Sony bought them out, I was buying the, the, the Sony bodies. Uh, my, I have an A700, which is a 12 megapixel DSLR. Still takes fantastic pictures. And I know guys, that 12 megapixel Sony sensor, there's the Nikon equivalent and the Pentax equivalent. I know tons of guys that still shoot with that sensor and say they get great pictures. Just shoot in raw, know the limits of that sensor. You could take great pictures. Uh, people focus so much on the technology, focus on the ergonomics, functionality, the firmware, those things that make it easier for you to shoot. Uh, for me, DSLR, I shoot Sony just because I shoot Minolta and I'm just kind of stuck with it. So I'm gonna wrap up soon, guys. This is uh, almost one hour. I thank you so much. I didn't, I, I even told Camera Girl before I started this that if I had 16 people on, I would be happy. And right now I show 100, I think I peaked at about 139. So, <laughs> no, you know, I'm gonna try, if you guys keep on commenting in the comments, this will actually be a regular video, It like, Unlike the Instagram that disappears alive, this will stay in. Um, keep on asking questions down below and I will keep on answering the questions. So thank you so much, great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And from all over the world, everywhere, I don't know what time you've all logged on, but thank you so much for logging on. This is my first time trying this live, so I'm pretty happy that I can do this interactive question. Like I haven't done a Q and A in about a year and a half. And one of the things is because there was no interaction between me and my followers and so uh, thank you so much for following should i even answer one more cynthia camera girl <laughs> cynthia camera girl do you see uh, something that's good that i should answer I, I, there's so many questions so many if, questions if, which yeah is great i think we'll have to go through them norway i i have i have many viking friends so hello norway and sweden too i love you swedes the volvos are awesome cars Oh, someone and is Hasselblad. saying that the chat disappears if you stop, so questions get lost. Okay, so the questions get lost, but you can still comment again in the comment section, right? So if I haven't answered, please just add um, add the comment again. LA, I really want to go to LA. Somebody help me get to LA. Uh, do a, I'll do a workshop down the West Coast, Portland, Seattle, uh, LA, and all the way down to my friends down in San Diego, but oh, good, I have to do something. Good, uh, good comment. It says, copy the chat before you shut it down. Can I, can I copy it? Okay, let me just see How here. Do you do that? Manage moderators, participants, pop out chat, toggle timestamps, pop out chat. I don't know really how to do that, guys. I'm sorry. How do I, how do, we'll, I do that? We'll figure it out, I guess. Because if I stop it, what happens? I don't know how to save it, guys. I'm sorry. Germany. All right. I'm just going through all these comments here. X70 new sensor. Yeah, I asked. I, I sort of pushed Billy about it. He says it sold well, so most likely there will be one. I'm thinking late this year, but and with the XE3, that's my guess. XE3 and the XE, X70 will probably come out later this year. I'm thinking the biggest problem is the sensor. You know, Sony's pumping out these sensors as fast as they can. Fujifilm selling out the X-T2. They're selling out of all the cameras. As quickly as they're being built, they're being sold. The bottleneck is the sensor. And so uh, the X-70 is probably on its way, but you just gotta wait for the production to Sony for, to ramp up that production until Fujifilm and Panasonic can get uh, that organic sensor going and their own factories going. Uh, this is gonna be the same problem. So uh, that's it, right, Camera Girl? Yeah, uh, you can try. Oh, here we go. Someone's telling me Control A, select all text, Control C to copy, paste. Uh, that sounds complicated. Do I have to do that before I finish the video or can I do that after? EVF or GR? Yeah, you know what? The GXR had an EVF. I actually like the modular system of the GXR. I wish Rico, I hope they don't give up on it. But if they do, EVF will be great on the GR3. I've been bugging Rico. I have my contact in Canada. It's like, please, please send me the pre-production GR and I will do a, a great video on that. But 
Uh, we'll see. My relationship with Rico is not like that of Fujifilm and Leica. And Canon's very good too. But Rico, uh, it's a division of Rico North America. And Rico North America, I don't think they're that well connected with Rico Imaging UK, which is very strong. And Rico Imaging South Asia, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong. So yeah, I'm still struggling to try to connect with Rico HQ in Japan. I would love to. If anyone has a connection with Rico in Japan, please send them my way. All right. Should I stop this? Well, it's over an hour now. <laughs> Thanks for all your tips uh, on how to copy and paste. Uh, and to those who offer to copy and send it to BHT. Yes, if you, you do that, much. yes, that'd be great. And then send it to um, info at bigheadtaco.com and if it's too big to send to me then just put it in your Dropbox and then just send me the link and I'll go in. I'll try my best to answer what I can but if you don't mind instead of me reading through 400 questions if you just re put the questions down below and uh, re-ask them so that everybody else can benefit from it because you know I may have had a total of say t I see people dropping in and out and say 300 views but often I get you know sometimes lately I've been getting 10, 20, 30,000 people who see my video. So it'd be nice to have the same questions down below again. So once this finishes, I'm gonna make a thumbnail, but you can start adding those questions down below. So hopefully you can do that. So thank you so much for watching. I am going to do my famous, infamous, uh, please, sorry, I'm not sure, can you like? So I, I, it looks like I have 43 likes. If you can like, that'd be nice. It does actually help me when people like my videos. Uh, I am looking for sponsors. I am looking for different brands to work with me and not just views, but also follow uh, likes makes a difference to me. So if it isn't too much work, yes, I'm gonna do my click click. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, Camera Girl is my producer for this uh, video. We will talk to you soon. Happy shooting. Oh, insert memory card. Um, sorry guys, I'm gonna just have to do it the old school way, which is, oh no, it's gonna work. All right, thank you for watching and happy shooting.